dear friends, welcome back to your favorite channel, where we bring you trending and interesting news from around the world. May I quickly encourage you to please subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Kindly hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Endeavor to share these new stories with your friends, family, relations and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed. Thank you so much guys, I appreciate your support. It was the renowned African-American author Tony Dungy that said the secret to success is good leadership. And good leadership is all about making the lives of your team members or workers better. Barely one year since the Supreme Court made him governor from a distant fourth position, no right-thinking person can say Governor Hope Uzodimma has made the lives of Imolites better. Based on Dongi's definition of a good leader, Uzodimma's failure to better the lives of Imolites almost 12 months after his controversial assumption of office has exposed him as a bad leader. The governor's action and inactions since he assumed office on the 20th day of January 2020 has given the people more reasons to reject him and even wish for his soon exit from office. To buttress the above point, I shall give month-to-month -month rundown of some of the above-mentioned actions and inactions of the governor, which has further estranged him from the people he has been seeking fruitlessly to endear himself. During his inaugural speech, Governor Hope Uzadima stated, and I quote, Imo will prosper under my watch. He went on to say that his vision of a new Imo state is predicated on freedom, security, and shared prosperity. Wielded into good governance. Suffice it to say here without fear or contradiction that the governor has not fulfilled any of these promises at all. Instead, the reverse has obviously been the case. In the month of January, the governor, being fully aware of the depth profile of the state and the paucity of funds, appointed a total of 63 special advisors and 32 senior special assistants. This is besides the 22 commissioners and other appointed aides. The economic implication of this unnecessary overbloated list of appointees cannot be overstated. The huge cost of maintaining all these aides definitely takes the huge cost of maintaining all this aid definitely takes a serious toll on the lean resources of the states. No wonder the government is unable to meet its financial obligations on, all, on almost all fronts. Conversely, this runs contrary to the shared prosperity ideology of this administration, which appears to be in place to consume instead of create wealth. In February, in this month, the governor signed into law the amendment of the Imo State Revenue Ad Administration Law 2020 to channel 95% of the internally generated revenue directly to government coffers. This was meant to boost the revenue base of the state and better the lives of Imolites. Since the law was signed and implemented, the government has not been able to explain to Imolites what they have achieved with the 95% IDR running into billions of Naira since the past 11 months. In this same month, the governor informed Imolites that his administration had commenced a comprehensive maintenance work on the Otameri headworks of the Owere Regional Water Scheme as part of measures to, gen to guarantee constant supply of portable water to residents of Owere Metropolis. Eleven months after, not a single 
home in Owere Metropolis can boast of supply of portable water from the Owere Regional Water Scheme. Boreholes have remained the main source of portable water to most residents of Owere Metropolis. Furthermore, the governor, the governor told Imolites that certain foreign investors by the name American International Health Incorporated, led by its chief medical officer, Professor Uchi Waneri, had donated $1.2 million worth of medical equipment to the state. Till date, Imolites have not, been, have not seen, let alone make use of the so-called equipment. Judging by this, it is crystal clear that this government is gambling and politicking with the health of Imolites. On the 28th of April 2020, the governor pledged to revive the multi-billion Naira Avutu pole tree established by late Governor Sam Mbakwe. To make good his promise, the governor brought in local investors by the name CMX Industries, Managed by the disqualified All Progressive Congress Imo North Senatorial Rerun candidate, Mr. Frank Ibe Zim, and his team paid a cursory visit to the poultry and disappeared. The poultry has remained moribund till date. In the same month, and during his address on his 100th day in office, Governor Uzadema claimed that the IGR of the state had increased from 600 million to 1.2 billion naira. He also claimed that the 2 billion naira is being saved monthly after eradicating the stinking fraud in the public service payroll system. This is besides over 4 billion naira received as monthly allocation from the Federation account. He further promised that this, with the savings, the government will be able to deliver more roads, more housing, and better hospitals and schools in the coming months and years. Additionally, he promised to pay workers' salaries on or before end of every month. Again, up till now, Imolites have never seen the monthly savings of $3.2 billion and the over $4 billion monthly allocation, nor the new roads housing, better hospitals and schools promised by the governor. Also, workers' salaries and pensions are not paid as at when due. Instead, they are being owed many months in arrears. In May, the governor during an inspection visit promised to revive Ada Palm and create employment for over 35,000 Imolites. Till date, the company has not been revived and no job has been created for 35,000 people as promised. In June, due to the excruciating hardship they had experienced as a result of non-payment of their entitlement since March, pensioners staged a peaceful protest on the 22nd day of June 2020. Aged and weak senior citizens defied the scorching sun to demonstrate on the streets of Oweri to demand for their rights. Unfortunately, their plea fell on deaf ears as the governor ignored them and has not paid up the arrears of their unpaid pensions till date. In the same month, the governor being jittery about the strong opposition mounted by the People's Democratic Party in defense of the suffering masses ordered the arrest and detention of the party's new media spokesman, Ambrose Nwaugugu. While Google was arraigned and trumped up on trumped up charges of terrorism and for calling the governor Supreme Court governor. Many viewed the governor's action as undemocratic, autocratic, and a calculated attempt to muscle the opposition. In July, Uzadima took Imolites for another ride when he announced that his administration had signed a memorandum of understanding with Julius Berger Company, construction company on Oweri Olu Road construction. Till date, Imolites have neither seen Julius Berger Construction Company mobilized to site, nor the commencement of construction on this said road. 
If a pro poorer state like Ebonyi could construct good roads and turn flyovers using Julius Beja Company, what is stopping Imo from doing the same? In August, Imo state government purportedly launched mobile health insurance program with support from the World Health Organization to achieve seamless coverage of the over 96% population in the informal sector of the state on health insurance while reducing the existing out-of-pocket expenditure of 92%. Till date, not a single citizen can attest to the fact that they have been, re they have been covered. The whole program simply fizzled out like others. In September, in furtherance to his dictatorial tendencies, Governor Uzodema signed into law the Draconian Imo State Administration of Criminal Justice Law Number no. 2 of 2020, which empowers him to arrest and detain Imolites at will. In October, sequel to the NSAS protest, Governor Uzodema approved the sum of 2 billion naira from a 6 billion naira earmarked for youth empowerment to be deployed for training of first batch of beneficiaries. The governor stated that the first, second, and third batches of an estimated number of 500,000 Imo youths will be trained in different skills acquisition. Within the next two years, I'm provided with startup capital to begin their own enterprises. Till date, the venue and beneficiaries of the seemingly or plausible program have remained a mirage. In December, the sudden closure of the state secretariat by the governor, when workers' salaries were yet to be paid a few days to experts, was viewed as inhuman by many observers. The closure disrupted plans by workers to get some palliatives for the festive period since the government had no plans for their welfare. It is on record that some governors, sorry, some workers are still owed October to November salaries, while others have yet to be paid since March. Well, it is what it is, guys. You can see the reasons and so many more why Imolites still reject Hope Uzodema. What are your thoughts, guys? Drop by at the comment section and let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Kindly hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the other news. Thank you, and bye for now.